for the books that I had. I'm only wearing the stethoscope like this for the, uh, for the thumbnail. We don't wear them like this in the hospital because of infection control. Hello my wonderful friends and welcome back to my channel or a warm welcome to anyone here who is new. This is my channel Wellbeing with Helena, I'm of course Helena and today is more of a story time video and I'm going to be telling you how I got into medical school um, from college and here I am to tell you that you don't need anything fancy to get into medical school. You don't need gap medics, you don't need uh, five A stars, <laughs> you don't even need maths A level. I didn't have it. So whether you're wondering how to get into medical school for yourself or you're simply curious about the things that we have to go through to get there, um, today I'll be discussing all of that. And I am now a fourth year medical student so it was a few years ago that I was going through this pathway to do my application to medical school. But when I started to become interested in the idea of becoming a doctor I asked my parents, you know, how do people become doctors? And Bear in mind, I have no doctors in my family, my parents are not doctors. They told me I'd have to go and study a degree called medicine. And I probably kicked off because I thought that medicine was cowpole and paracetamol and um, pyroton because that was my childhood experience of medicine. And I was like, oh my God, I don't want to study I don't want to study pills. So that just tells you how far I have come since then. <laughs> so really I had a lot of grinding and learning to understand what medicine is, what medical school is, what the pathway to becoming a doctor is really like. And when I found out that I'd have to study in university for five years to get into, um, sorry, to become a doctor, I was pretty shook. And also I didn't know the sort of grade standards that there were for medicine and I wasn't even sure that I could obtain them. So it wasn't really until after my GCSE results that I had exceeded my school's expectations, my own expectations, my parents' expectations of how well I would do, um, that I actually started really considering medicine as a possibility. For reference, my school was an all-girls school, but they didn't have a sixth form. So after my GCSEs, I had to change paths, and I had to choose between going to a sixth form of another school, which I wasn't that keen on because I thought, oh, everyone will already know each other, and I'd heard of this magical place called college where there was no school uniform, and it was like a mini uni. And once I'd been to college, to open days, I thought, yes, this is it. it it felt so big, so promising, so free. It really kind of felt like it fit with me. Around this time, I started doing a lot of research into how to get into medical school. And obviously, um, I saw that for your A-level choices, you should pick, you know, biology, chemistry, physics, and maths. Typically, that's the kind of by the book way to go, the three sciences and maths. However, the thought of doing three sciences plus maths it kind of made me feel a bit sick. So actually what I decided to do after much trepidation was to study um, biology, chemistry, maths and English literature. And I'm so glad that I did because that was such a bright spot in my timetable to um, express some flair, originality, creativity when the other three subjects that I was studying were quite technical and factual. So my next steps were to gain relevant work experience. If any of you have researched how to get into medical school, you'll know that's a really important component of your application and it's um, the part that you might include in your personal statement. So I set about obtaining some medical experience. As I said, I didn't know any doctors, so I didn't really have any links to the medical profession. And you know, I called my GP. You'll know if you've tried this that that doesn't work because you're not allowed to work in the practice that you go to for patient confidentiality reasons. Not only this, but because I was maybe oh, 16, 17, maybe even 15, I couldn't get experience really in my local area. And I tried everything. I tried um, reaching out to hospital staff. I tried m several general practices. I even tried dentists and I couldn't even get a foot in the door. Once it became clear to me that that wasn't going to work, um, <laughs> I knew that I had to change my plan. And so I started barking up another tree and that tree was volunteering. And I will tell you now, volunteering is so much easier to obtain than a medical shadowing experience, at least for me it was. And so I ended up with three volunteering experiences. My first volunteering experience was in a care home for the elderly, and that was a weekly commitment for after school time. The second thing I did was um, join a buddy scheme for disabled children, and this was a really nice project for my local area. So I would meet with um, a younger girl who had some disabilities, uh, maybe every fortnight or so and I would do that mostly on weekends actually. And the third volunteering opportunity that I had was in a hospital but it wasn't any kind of you know medical 
volunteering, it was dining companionship, which is basically helping um, in the geriatric ward at mealtimes. It was kind of difficult because they often wanted to talk and have a conversation and you wanted them to eat. And so <laughs> you'd have these really long um, interactions with these people who just wanted to tell you their life story, um, but you were just there to help them out with the food and dinner time. So. Yeah, it was, <laughs> it was hard. Then I was really lucky because I had a friend's mum who heard about my trials and tribulations of trying to get work experience and she offered to put me in contact with the district nursing team in my area, um, which I really jumped at because, you know, that's the closest thing I could get to being um, with doctors. And so I did a two week uh, experience placement with the district nurses and I shadowed this one district nurse who I still remember to this day as being absolutely lovely. Because of the nature of her work, um, we often were traveling between people's houses she had so much time to share with me um, her insights into the hospital setting and there were reasons why she had adjusted her career path from the hospital setting to district nursing and honestly she really mentally prepared me for hardships and for not feeling like you might have enough time with patients in a hospital setting she also warned me about burnout and long hours but she also told me about all the rewards and kind moments that you see in medicine so I really value her wisdom and kindness even to this day she was the closest thing that I had at that time to um, experiencing medicine she was the closest thing that I had um, to meeting a doctor and I'm really really grateful to her for you know just taking me on at that time so those are my key experiences that I gained those four key experiences and honestly I would say that experiences like that um, don't get me wrong gap medics sounds awesome but if you work um, in the NHS system here or you experience it in some way or form in volunteering you get a really true feel for what medicine is like in the UK. And with these long-term commitments as well, you develop more perseverance. You kind of avoid putting on the rose-tinted glasses that you might if you go abroad and do a placement there where you're really looked after. Um, medicine isn't always like that. So then I was properly preparing my application for medical school. So I was writing my personal statement and preparing for the UK CATS. And if you'd like to know about those processes and how I went through them in more detail then let me know by giving this video a thumbs up to know it's a point of interest or leave a comment if you have a very specific question and I'm totally happy to answer them. For me being in college there was no um, support with the UK CAT or BMAT and so I decided I would just do one. I would do the UK CAT and concentrate my efforts on that rather than being spread thin across two different exams which would be no doubt challenging on top of my A-levels. So I purchased these two books. I had one for my personal statements, one for the medical school interviews, and I also had the UK CAT one, but I just can't find it right now. Um, for the UK CAT, um, I kind of used the book at first and I tried to go through the questions in the book. I learned techniques from the book, I learned the style of the questions, um, the format of the exam, and I kind of slowly went through that in my own time. But I found it really difficult because timing is such an integral part of the UK CAT and I wasn't really getting that from the book. So what I did was one month before I purchased an online um, membership to a question bank for UK CAT questions. And because that mimics the exam, um, really accurately in terms of timings and the sort of questions that you get. That really brought me up to speed and taught me all the little neat tips and tricks that I needed. In that month, I that's when I really prepared for that exam. Before that month, I wasn't ready. Okay, and then the personal statement. So, um, <laughs> in case you don't know, this book is full of examples of personal statements. And really, I found this book pretty daunting because the personal statements are quite full of um, loads of experiences, quite heart-wrenching stories. Different people have different approaches to how they write, but this book kind of made me a bit scared because I had no experience in writing a personal statement. It's such a hard balance to hit. I didn't know what the applications teams would be looking for. Um, and in my college, we had one lady who said that she would read personal statements for um, students applying to medicine. And bear in mind that college has thousands of people in two-year groups, so it's like mini uni didn't really know the other people applying to medicine it's not really like i worked collaborati collaboratively with anyone else a lot of what i learned about personal statements applying and um what was right to include in my personal statement was from this book from the internet and i think from maybe youtube okay so um and to be honest i didn't really agree with a lot of what this lady said to me about my personal statement i felt like <clears throat> where i was personal and honest and raw she wanted me to 
be more factual, but I actually didn't have access to a lot of the medical knowledge I <laughs> learned throughout my medical career. It didn't feel right for me to use terms that I didn't know, because I just thought, you know, if I go to an interview and I have to portray that, it's not going to be accurate or a fair representation. So I end up asking my biology teachers to also read my personal statement, um, and I think my biology teacher was really helpful, um, gave me some really good, honest advice about what they would be looking for in a personal statement. Okay, so at this point I also want to say that when I got my AS level results I'd got AABB and you know that's not bad in the grand scheme of things but because my applications um, were going to all require AAA or higher I was really frightened. I was kind of mortified <laughs> by my AABB because I knew that I'd have to pull one of them up to an A for sure. I just became aware that there was a lot of room to slip and I don't know whether or not it was because I was in college it was more, a lot more self-directed and so there was a lot more kind of room for slippage or if it was just the A levels much harder than GCSE it probably is both so then what I actually did was I decided to drop maths because my strongest grade from that year was actually in English literature and I really needed to maximize my chances of getting my three A's. I also really didn't like maths and I had a B in maths, so it really was a no brainer for me to drop maths and continue with biology, chemistry and English literature. I had to double check that of course that would be okay for my medical school applications and I couldn't find anywhere saying that that was a bad idea but I also couldn't really find anywhere saying that was a good idea. I found people saying that that would be okay and as you can see because I got into medical school um, it is actually absolutely fine to not have you know three sciences and maths. You can get into medical school with um, I think biology and chemistry are pretty much the ones that you most certainly need but something different is okay as long as it's regarded as a subject which really demonstrates you know academic strength academic prowess i applied to four big cities all in different places in the uk and then came my interviews and oh my goodness i was terrified <laughs> I think at that point in my life I was very painfully shy and whether or not I knew it, I really played into the age separation gap between adults and young people and though I was a teenager I, I didn't have much experience talking to adults, particularly not in a way that asserted myself. So okay, I had three interviews for medical school. I got one straight up rejection, that was from Bristol, but um, I really wanted to go to Cardiff. Um, and that was my first interview and oh my goodness my first interview it really did it really did go terribly and I'm, I'm not fabricating it was really really bad I think I was like a rabbit in the headlights the entire time just because it was the one I wanted the most and I put so much pressure on myself that when I tried to answer the questions I was a little bit breathless I, I was very very frightened and when I left that room I knew pretty much that I hadn't done well so then I had my next interview at Liverpool and I picked myself up, dusted myself off, I was like, okay, right, so my first one went badly, this one will not go badly. I thought that I answered all the questions at that Liverpool interview fairly well. I actually thought I carried myself quite well as well. I felt confident, I felt quite brave when I was there and because I'd had that bad experience with my first one, this one felt like it had gone really, really well. And then there was quite a long period that ensued where I didn't hear anything. And I then received a rejection from Cardiff, which I was kind of expecting. And then I received a rejection from Liverpool as well. So when I didn't get that offer from Liverpool, it kind of broke my heart a bit because I thought that interview had gone quite well. And by that point, I'd then received a rejection from Bristol, Cardiff and Liverpool. And I only had one more university, which is the London University. And I was just waiting to hear from them. And I thought, you know, they could just be waiting to reject me straight up. And I just waited and it was quite, I think it was quite far into the year actually that I got a notification of my last interview. <laughs> this was essentially my last chance to get into medicine and I was really scared. <laughs> I was really scared, but I'd kind of resigned a little bit. I'd been really humbled by the experience of having three rejections, um, even after an interview that I had felt that I'd done my very best. And so I went into this interview, I had the mindset that, you know, if this is meant for me, I guess this will happen. And if it doesn't, well, I've already had three rejections, another one would just, you know, complete the set. But maybe that little bit of faith and humble humbleness um, actually worked in my favour because after that final interview, um, I was offered a place. I still remember to this day when I got my, um, <laughs> my offer. Wow, I don't know why I'm getting emotional. 
it was so long ago, but I still remember the day I was on the train with my um, one of my long-term best friends. I'm still good friends with her now, Evie, and I was so emotional. I think I just cried on the train. <laughs> I don't know if I mentioned um, my results from UKCAT, but the UKCAT I'd passed fairly well. They were good enough that they really supported my application to medical school. So then it was all about obtaining my a levels and um, in my A2 year I really pulled my socks up to make sure that I got those three A's so in the summer I got my A level results and I remember opening my laptop I was really petrified probably cold sweating or something like that and I had these results come up on the screen and it was an A star AA I'd met the conditions of my offer and I was accepted to medical school in London and that is, you know, a kind of whistle-stop tour of my story of how I got into medical school and became a medical student. So if you enjoyed this and you would like to hear the part two of my story from my first year of medical school, um, the very first day up until where I am now, which is fourth year slash I'm going to be going into fifth year after this summer, then please subscribe and put on notifications so you know when I post that video. And um, yes, as I said, please ask any questions that you would like to in the comments if you have any requests for um, topics for future videos for medical students or in your case maybe pre-medical students. I had a lot to learn when I was at the school stages. So of course if I can help you streamline your journey I would be very happy to do so. And also please share this video with anyone that would be interested in knowing this kind of medical school story and also know that you can get into medical school without anything fancy. You can do volunteering experiences, you don't have to do loads of A-levels, you can get in with three and one of them doesn't have to be maths. <laughs> so that's all for today. I really hope you enjoyed this story and I will see you all next time in my part two of this story. Bye!